Hello, how are you? This is Hina from Team Walat and here I am after Onam. If you're from South, I know this is one of the biggest occasions to celebrate, to come together, to unite. And we've seen it through Walat on YouTube, that beautiful video that has been uploaded. I've seen it more than, I'm not kidding, 100 times. The video uploaded before mine, this video. It's just a less than one minute clip of how Onam was celebrated at Wallat Education. Wow, you should go check it out. So after the Onam break, here I am back again, continuing our LGBTQ series in English literature. Today, we will discuss about the famous LGBT writers. You should know them. Which writers are we going to discuss? Patricia Highsmith. Second, Jean Janet. Third, Mary Renault. And fourth, James Baldwin. Are you ready to know about them? Yes, you are. Look at Patricia on the screen. An American novelist and a short story writer who lived from 1921 to 1995. Patricia Highsmith used a pseudonym or a false name of Claire Morgan. Claire Morgan. Patricia wrote 22 novels out of which many have been adapted into films. She belonged to the period of modernist literature and existentialism. She is actually hailed as a lesbian with a misogynist trick. Uh, what uh, does that mean? She says that, yes, I liked women, but then uh, just in bed. You should actually read about her, you know, biography. All right. She was also called as the poet of apprehension by novelist Graham Greene. And she faced a lot of traumas, a lot of depressing moments in her life. And when she was writing her diary journal, listen to the lines written by Patricia in her diary writing in 1947. To all the devils, lusts, passions, greeds, envies, loves, hates, strange desires, enemies, ghostly and real, the army of memories with which I do battle, may they never give me peace. See, her year of existence is 1921, when coming out openly that, yes, I'm a homosexual, was a crime. So all these writers who were trying to consider writing as an outsource, as, as a way to provide information that they are different from the normal society definition of sexuality, they actually faced a lot of traumas. And the same happened with Patricia. Patricia is famous for her psychological thriller novels. Her first novel is called Strangers on a Train of 1950. In Strangers on a Train, there are two men, one good and one evil. They meet on a train and how their lives, they get entangled, inextricably entangled. That is what is discussed in Patricia's first novel, Strangers on a Train of 1950. Then came The Price of Salt of 1952, which is a lesbian fiction romance, semi-autobiographical, in which two women, one married and one unmarried, they meet in a departmental store and begin a passionate affair. Patricia, during one point of uh, her life, also worked in a departmental store where she had an affair. So The Price of Salt is semi-autobiographical. Later, 38 years later, in 1990, The Price of Salt was published as Carol, in which Patricia's real name was used. Whereas in The Price of Salt, her pseudonym, Claire Morgan, was used. Thik, aage bade. What is Patricia famous for today? The Ripleyad series of five novels. Basically, she created a, a character called as Mr. Ripley or Tom Ripley who is a very charming criminal, a criminal, but a charming criminal. And about the tales of Tom Ripley have been discussed in these Ripleyad series of five novels. All right. So read about it. Patricia Highsmith wrote The Talented Mr. Ripley in 1955, a novel about Tom Ripley, a charming criminal who murders a rich man and steals his identity. Later, she followed The Talented Mr. Ripley by four more novels. You want to know their names? Ripley Underground of 1970, Ripley's Game of 1974, The Boy Who Followed Ripley of 1980, 
and replay under water of 1991 all these are mystery novels and in them tom replay acts as a con artist he is a serial killer who always gets away with his crimes Thick. another works by Patricia Highsmith are The Blunderer of 1954, Deep Water of 1957, The Cry of the Owl of 1962. All these are psychological thrillers for which Patricia is known. Then The Animal Lover's Book of Beastly Murder of 1975, which depicts the killing of humans by animals. The Animal Lover's Book of Beastly Murder. Apart from all this, Patricia Highsmith also wrote short stories. For instance, The Black House of 1981, Tales of Natural and Unnatural Catastrophes of 1987, Plotting and Writing Suspense Fiction of 1966, which is Patricia's book on the craft of writing. Which book? Plotting and Writing Suspense Fiction. T then, after she passed away, Patricia Highsmith, her diaries and notebooks of 1941 to 1995, this book was published posthumously in 2021 by Anna Von Planta. Tick, easy, easy. Tick, we're done with, I'm sorry, I'm just clearing my camera screen. I feel I'm a little dark. Am I not dark today? <laughs> Bear with it. I will start the light in my next video. The next LGBTQ writer, very famous, is from France. His name is Jean Genet. Look at Jean on the screen. Lived from 1910 to 1986. French writer and a political activist, or I can say he was a social outcast throughout his life. He was an illegitimate child born to a prostitute. Adapted at seven months by another family, a peasant family or a carpenter from family, either of the two. So during Jean Janet's growing years, he involved himself in theft, in crime. And therefore, Jean Janet was a very often in jail, brought in jail, brought out of jail, in, out. He was considered a French criminal and a social outcast turned writer. Jean Janet's first novel is called Our Lady of the Flowers of 1943. This Our Lady of the Flowers was written in prison and the characters in Our Lady of the Flowers are mostly homosexuals. At 15, when Jean Janet was 15, he was sent to a rehabilitation school which was called Metri Penal Colony. Metre Penal or Penal Colony. Here he wrote or you know, his novel based on the Metropenal Colony is called Miracle of the Rose, published in 1946. Semi-autobiographical, Miracle of the Rose describes Jean Janet's experiences in this penal colony, in this school and in Fontevrault prison, where he was taken a prisoner. All right, let's move on. Look at Jean Janet, the old Jean Janet on the screen. So after coming out from this rehabilitation school, Janet decided to join the Foreign Legion of France, basically the army unit, the French army. So at the age of 18, Janet's detention ended when he joined the Foreign Legion. But from here also, he was expelled because of his homosexual acts. His work, The Thief's Journal of 1949, which is autobiographical, explores his life as a criminal and as a male prostitute through 1930s Europe, where he wore little, endured hunger, contempt, fatigue. And the protagonist of this thief's journal is hot for crime and lives the life of the vermin. Basically, the thief's journal protagonist romanticizes criminality as well as homosexuality. I'm giving you facts. Another novels by Jean Janet are Funeral, Funeral Rites of 1947 and Querelle of Breast of 1947. In 1952, French philosopher Jean-Paul Sartre wrote a long analysis of Janet's existential development. You know, uh, basically Sartre called Janet from vagrant to a writer. And he named, Sartre named his work as Saint Janet actor and martyr. This work was published in 1952. 
Jean Janet was affected so much by Sartre's work on him that he did not write for coming five years. And also Janet turned erotic and obscene into poetic universe. That is how he wrote. He's called the prime figure. Jean Janet is called the prime figure in the theater of the absurd and theater of cruelty. Okay, you'll remember this. With this, let's come to the famous plays of Jean Janet. Why do I keep on putting their new, new images so that, so that you look at them and you remember more about them, what I'm trying to tell you, you listen to me properly. So look at Jean Janet, another photograph of his on the screen. His famous plays are The Maids of 1947, Death Watch of 1949, The Balcony of 1956, The Blacks of 1958, the Screens of 1961. This belongs to the theater of hatred, the theater of cruelty. With this, Jean Janet is done. Let's come to the third writer whose pen name is Mary Renault, but whose original name is Eileen Mary Chalance. Eileen Mary Chalance of 1905 to 1983. I am finding myself so dark. Please pause, pause. I'm finding myself so dark. Let me get up and start my light. Do you think this helps? Yes, it does. It does. Okay, the third writer in LGBTQ writings is Mary Renault or Eileen Mary Chanel, Chil Chalance, who lived from 1905 to 1983. She was a British-born South African novelist, basically born in England, but she left for South Africa with her partner. She stayed there. She wrote openly about homosexuality, about lesbian characters without facing the homophobia of England or without facing the censorship that she had to when she was in England. T, let's start with Mary Renault. Lived from 1905 to 1983, a homosexual who worked as a nurse during World War II. And her lifelong partner was called Julie Mullard. Julie Mullard. Later, as I told you, Mary moved to Cape Town, South Africa, along with Julie. She wrote freely about gay characters without fearing the homophobia and the censorship of England. The themes of her novels are love, sexuality, and relationship. She is very famous for historical fiction novels set in ancient Greece. Remember, Mary Renault wrote novels based on ancient Greece, you know, which belong to the genre of historical fiction. Okay, let's come to major works by Mary Renault and also look at the old Mary Renault on the screen. Her contemporary romance novels are Purpose of Love of 1939, Return to Night of 1947, The North Face of 1948, The Charioteer of 1953. The Charioteer is basically a story of you two young gay servicemen in the 1940s, who believed in the ideals expressed in Plato's Federus and Symposium. And let me tell you, Mary herself believed in these ideals of Plato. She was a follower of Plato. So she based the charioteer novel of 1953 on her own ideals. Take Greek novels, as I told you, the historical fiction, Greek historical novels by Mary Renault. Not all very important, but you should know. She wrote about this historical fiction based on ancient Greece. The Last of the Wine of 1956, which is set in Athens during the Peloponnesian War. Next, The King Must Die of 1958. Next, The Bull from the Scene from the Sea of 1962. All these novels have male sexuality as a major theme in them. Next by Mary Renault, based on the ancient Greece, is The Lion in the Gateway. Next, The Mask of the Apollo of 1966. Next, Fire from Heaven of 1969, which depicted Alexander the Great from the age of four till his father's death. Next, The Persian's Boy of 1972. Next, The Nature of Alexander of 1975, which was like a biography of Alexander the Great. And next is Funeral Games of 1981. Got it? Teek? Done? Mary Renault is done. And with this, we come to the last writer of the day, very important African-American writer, a civil rights activist who fought for the rights of the Blacks, 
James Baldwin. Look at James and his big smile on the screen. James Baldwin lived from 1924 to 1987. He wrote passionately about race and queer fiction. He was the eldest of the nine children and he was raised in utter poverty in Harlem, New York City. He turned into a preacher because he was heavily influenced by his stepfather. Later, he moved to Europe and the themes of James Baldwin's novels are masculinity, sexuality, race and class. He was the voice of the gay liberation movement in mid 20th century America. That's James Baldwin. He lived from 1924 to 1987. Listen to the major works of James Baldwin. Very important is Go Tell It on the Mountain of 1953. It is a semi-autobiographical novel. Go Tell It on the Mountain is the story of John Grimes, an intelligent teenager who lived in 1930s Harlem, just like James Baldwin, and also John, John Grimes' relationship with his family, as well as the Pentecostal Church. Tick. Next work by Baldwin was called Another Country of 1962. Next is Giovanni's Room of 1956, important work. Giovanni's Room explores the life of an American man named David who is living in Paris along with his homoerotic feelings. Particularly, uh, David feels strong attraction towards an Italian bartender called Giovanni whom he meets in a Parisian gay bar or in Paris gay bar. Another work by Baldwin is If Beale Street Could Talk of 1974. Essay Collections of James Baldwin. Notes of a Native Son of 1955, which is an essay collection based on human equality. Notes of a Native Son. Next work is Nobody Knows My Name of 1961. Next by James Baldwin is called The Fire Next Time of 1963. After essays, let's talk about the famous plays of James Baldwin. The Aim in Corner of 1954 is a play about a woman evangelist. And another play by Baldwin is called Blues for Mr. Charlie of 1964. Unfinished manuscript by James Baldwin was called Remember This House. Remember This House, which was later expanded and it was published as a 2016 documentary film titled I am not your Negro. So you can say I am not your Negro is based on Remember This House by James Baldwin. And this documentary, I Am Not Your Negro, won the BAFTA Award for Best Documentary. We're done. Done for the day. Done for the famous writers of LGBT literature. In my next video, I'm going to get another important writers based on our series. This is Hina from Team Walak. Take very good care of yourself. And if you liked our video, of course, you have to like, share and subscribe. Take care of yourself. Bye.